Ага. 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 А? Ugh, that 25k mark just won't stick, will it? Bitcoin has been testing resistance there for the last few days, but just can't seem to stay over the line. Apparently there was actually 26,000 we should be looking at and wondering why Bitcoin isn't even higher. We'll have some detailed analysis on that for you in just a second. Meme coins, meanwhile, have been having all the fun, shocking, I know, and the merge. Oof, more merge. Look, it's a big deal, okay. Join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. So Bitcoin should be higher. Well, potentially, at least that's the idea behind it trading in line with equity markets, which has basically been doing so for most of this year. That correlation, though, sort of seems to be softening, so to speak. The world's largest cryptocurrency has been flirting with staying over the 25,000 mark over the last few days. It hasn't quite stuck again today, the fourth time it's failed to uh, do so over the last few days. As of Monday morning, Asia time, it was trading closer to 24,500. So WTF is going on. Well, Tony Sycamore of City Index has got the details for you. Tony, Bitcoin seemingly not in a rush to break above and stay above 25,000. What exactly is going on? I think there was signs that the market was looking forward to interest rates peaking in the US towards the end of this year, early next year. And you actually started to see Fed cuts be priced from February out until uh, the rest of the year. Now, what has happened over the past couple of weeks is there's been a pivot on the pivot, if you like. So as we know, the last FOMC meeting, which was the late July, 27th of July, uh, there was potentially, people were calling it a dovish pivot. I didn't think it quite got to that extent, but it was certainly a first move towards the dance floor, the dovish dance floor, if you like. But after that, there's been a string of Fed speakers coming out and saying it's unrealistic to expect interest rates to stop being raised into the early part of next year and certainly we don't see any prospect for interest rate cuts so when you start hearing these string of fed speakers saying the market's got it wrong there is no prospect of interest rate cuts uh, that has been i think probably weighing on bitcoin because bitcoin really does best when when monetary policy is loose when there's speculation that potentially it's going to be eased and for a moment or two that was in the winds but right now those fed speakers are really walking back expectations of interest rate cuts in the early part of 2023. bitcoin a bit sluggish then wall street though doing pretty well going into the weekend, the S&P and NASDAQ both seeing a fourth consecutive uh, weekly gain. Why is Bitcoin lagging those gains when previously we've seen it mirroring them? The correlation between the NASDAQ and Bitcoin has been weakening over the past couple of weeks. And we really saw that last week with the NASDAQ up around 13,300. The last time it was trading up at that level, Bitcoin was trading north of 35,000. And here we are knocking on the door of 25,000. Now, these correlations do ebb and flow in terms of strength. And it potentially is just a weakening which may reassert itself. But for the first six months of this year, Bitcoin and the NASDAQ were absolutely moving in lockstep. Now, whether Bitcoin can push up towards 26,000, which is where there is some very good trend channel resistance and break above there, it may be the trigger for that correlation to reassert itself. Just from a pure sense of spreads, when you look to where, as I mentioned, the NASDAQ sitting, Bitcoin should be much higher. Uh, so that's also creating doubt into people's minds. So let's see what happens when it takes on the 26,000 level. And what other factors are at play here? What might it take to get people back on board as far as uh, Bitcoin's current price is concerned? When you look at the overhang of the news we've had, obviously Celsius, Terra, um, all those sorts of things are still fresh in people's minds. Look, they're not like they were probably a, a month or two ago, but it's going to make people hesitant to get back into this space. And I think that's probably a good thing for the longer term, because if people have given up a little bit, uh, that's generally when the rallies can start to, to catch you by surprise. So it's not all bad, but I think it is keeping people on the sidelines. You're going to want to see if you're sitting with cash to deploy and you're thinking, 
you know, Bitcoin at 25,000, should I, shouldn't I? You're probably not gonna do anything because 25,000 is a level that it's been about sitting around just below for the past three to four weeks. Now, if Bitcoin suddenly got to 27,000, 28,000, and you've been sitting there waiting for a reason to buy, potentially a dip back below 20,000, and all of a sudden you get this FOMO, this fear of missing out, that can start to snowball. So right here, right now, there's no reason to get, I guess, or jump the gun. The weekend's biggest price action though came from meme coins. Doge jumped 10% in the 24 hours to 9 a.m. Hong Kong time on Monday. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Reaching its highest level since early June. Top dog, however, was SHIB, up a massive 37% in the same time frame. Why? Well, one factor could be that SHIB's number of Twitter followers recently overtook Doge. That is an important metric, of course, for a token heavily dependent on the popularity of its meme for driving prices. Meanwhile, Ethereum headed north of $2,000 briefly just before losing a third of a percent overnight. Despite that, ETH still up 14% on the week as we move closer to the merge. And Ethereum things are moving towards fever pitch. Fever pitch, does everyone know what that means? Anyway, they're exciting. The top three stablecoin issuers have backed the move to proof of stake. How big a deal is that though? Annabelle Huang, managing partner of Amber Group and a longtime friend of Forecast is here to tell us why. Annabelle, always a pleasure. So, Binance, Tether, Circle have all now said they're gonna support Ethereum's POS chain. What does that mean for the network? What might it mean for potential offshoots and forks? of which uh, speculation has grown quite significantly over the last few weeks. So it, it's important um, that these stablecoin players are supporting the new proof of stake chain because a lot of the DeFi activities, a lot of the on-chain activities um, will move on the new chain as a result of that. So if you look at potential ETH proof of work forks or any other kind of forks, then there's there wouldn't be such uh, vibrant or as much liquidity or capital being active on um, the fork chain because most of these major stable coins uh, are going to migrate to the new uh, proof of stake chain instead. So it's significant in, in terms of the fact that they can bring a lot of the users, a lot of the TVL, volume, capital to um, East 2 uh, as intended. The merge had been expected September 19th. Its final test net went live last week. Uh, ETH educator Anthony Sassano has suggested that it could happen, in fact, a few days before that. How confident should we be about uh, progress uh, towards the merge now? I think um, it is looking very close, and I think everybody, um, even the market price, uh, are reflecting that sentiment. Um, going into quite strong price movements uh, on, in light of very positive news in terms of testnet and then uh, anticipation of the final uh, migration, which looks to be even ahead of schedule. Um, so I think uh, September 15th, 16th will be a key day for us to, to watch. Um, and I think still there's going to be uncertainty around um, whether there will be uh, other forks around and, and how are assets being treated uh, in, in that sense. Um, and, and I think uh, a lot of people are talking about it. We do think there is non-zero risks uh, in, in case involved. Um, and in terms of a lot of sort of the borrow lending or uh, centralized uh, crypto finance platforms like ours, even looking to the legality of what it means to have assets uh, on the O chain and then being migrated to the to new chain or on the fork chain. Um, so I, I think a lot needs to happen from a technical perspective, but also from an operational perspective uh, from all the players, exchanges uh, included. And in terms of price, are you surprised we haven't seen things moving even higher? I think um, this whole leg up has been um, pricing in um, the, the ETH successful merge over time. So I think we were trading even below 1400s or 1600s and now we're um, north of 1800s as, as we speak. So I think uh, the, the price has been reflected over time. Uh, and like I mentioned, there's still a lot of uncertainty going into it. So um, I, I, wouldn't, I personally don't think it's going to be sort of like one 
one candlestick and then and then we we go up from here but um i think people are looking at uh sort of the developments over time and then there's a lot of different plays uh involving derivatives as well um, as a way to express your expectation around the verse timeline or um maybe you know sort of the the chance or value of having different forks out there um so, so it's actually quite interesting um from a trading perspective all right thanks for that annabelle annabelle huang managing partner at amber group a pleasure to talk to her as always All right, that is it from us. Like and subscribe to this video for more content like it. You can't get enough forecast in your life, believe me. Let us know your thoughts as well on what's happening, what's happening with Bitcoin prices and the merge. Stick those in the comments below.